So in this episode, I'm gonna share the single biggest realization, the most significant change agent that has occurred in my art and life. It's a simple idea, but for me, it changed everything. Not only did this approach to creativity help me climb out of a depression catalyzed by a time of just humongous personal and financial loss many years ago, but it also became the foundational underpinning of my teaching and the spark that created art to life. I stumbled upon this learning first out of desperation to help myself and my own art making, but soon realized that this idea was also helpful to others. It can be learned, and it's a big part of what I have now taught to thousands of artists interested in finding their way towards their own artistic expression. And I can say this approach unequivocally, it works. It all circles around to developing the discernment, the awareness to move towards what brings you alive in your art and life. So today I will dive a little deeper into this essential, powerful approach in the hopes that, you know, this just might move the needle in your art and life. Let me explain. Welcome to Art to Life a podcast for the creatively curious. My name is Nicholas Wilton, and each week I'll help you rediscover not just the art of your life, but the art in your life. Join me as we explore that perfect blue at twilight, the wild frontiers of art making, and the extraordinary joy of finding your way as you go. So I want to talk about the primary approach that I've been using for the last 25 years, at least helping artists strengthen and improve their art. It's what I kind of bumbled into on my own challenges, my own struggle with my own art making. When I was making my work, I mean, the hard time, (laughs) when I say the hard time, I mean, I, I was really into it. But probably most of the time, it wasn't very fun. And what I made, I really didn't like. But then occasionally I would make something that was extraordinary and that that lit me up, that was so cool. And then uh, then I wouldn't. And then there would just be this like roller coaster of, you know, I'm a failure and and then I'm the greatest thing that ever walked the earth. But mostly it it was pretty depressing, you know? And so I kept wondering, I kept, you know, I'd write in the margins of my sketchbook, you know, what I ate, like how, how could I make something on one day so successfully, seemingly so easy and and that really resonated with me. And then the next three days was nothing, or I would just waste my time. So I started to take notes and I mean, I literally, I would I thought it had to do with diet. I thought if I exercised more, I thought if I worked in the morning and I mean, I tried everything. I, I, and I tried every single kind of material as well. I, I copied other artists to see if like, maybe I'm a Picasso kind of an artist and that would make me happier. Or maybe I'm more of a, this kind of an artist, or maybe I'm a watercolor artist. That's what it is. It suits me better. You know, or maybe I just need to do collage or maybe I just need to do encaustic because I love, you know, which is true. I just, I love the surface of it and everything. And I was one of those people that I did everything. I tried everything. And and it's kind of cool because I know how to, I know how to use most art materials pretty well. Like I, I got good at a lot of them, not great, but you know, because I'd lose interest of course, because what I discovered and what became so cool to me was that I realized that it wasn't so much the materials or the kind of work I was making. It was more how I was feeling, (laughs) you know, when I was making the work and getting connected with how I wanted to feel, how I wanted to feel just standing there. What made me feel alive? If I could feel alive standing there, like excited, like good, like I, I don't know what's going to happen next excitement, you know, like wonder excitement, mystery, 
like the best possible parts of life, if I could feel that, if I could stay connected to that, and if I could make my work approach that or feel like that, that helped. That energy was kind of transmitted. And it was what I was interested in. You know, it's not that you have to make art that's exciting. You can make art that's depressing, but whatever the thing is you want to make, you've got to care about it. It has to mean something to you. And, and when I connected what I felt with what I was making, all kinds of shifts started happening. So the question of what brings you alive became paramount. And I started asking this and I asked it of myself, but I also asked it of those artists that I was working with, that I would help. What is it for you that brings you alive? What does that feel like? And what's so interesting is we might not know the kind of art we want to make because it's really hard to know, to forecast, to picture something before it's done. But when you ask someone that question and after a little while of digging, like they can answer it. Everyone can connect with that. We all know what it is when we feel optimal, when we feel energized. Like, where were you? What were you doing? When did that last happen? I mean, the absence of that feeling is also a clue of challenges around making art. Like you can't make art you know, that that is exciting to you that you're engaged with if you're not engaged when you're doing it. So this realization is actually the approach for art to life. This isn't really a thing that's taught, it turns out. I mean, I wasn't taught this. I went to an amazing art school. I went to Art Center College of Design and, you know, I learned a lot about, you know, how to paint and how to draw and color and, you know, all kinds of stuff. But I wasn't given this information. I wasn't given the information that I needed to find my own way to uncover what it is that's under the surface of me. And everybody has this. Everyone, it's all sitting there. It's all available, but there's no operating manual to like get at it. But this was a powerful clue. This is a powerful clue. This is a, this is a workaround. Sourcing that feeling and looking at your work from that point of view will reveal a couple things. It usually shows you that your work's kind of flat <laughs> or, you know, it's, it's not there yet. And it, it'll raise the bar and, and push you to keep changing it. So that's, that's a powerful piece of information that I've been sharing and teaching. It's pretty simple, really. Understanding what brings you alive or knowing when you feel that way and trying to get that experience and, and some of that energy when you're chasing down what you want to make or what you're thinking about making is really, really important. The overarching idea of coming alive and what does that, I call differences. And differences are things that we experience that we haven't before. If I just think of like feeling alive, I remember years ago, we were in Malaysia and we had gone to this beach on the Malaysian coast and it's where the leatherback sea turtles come to lay eggs. And I, you know, I love animals, you know, and we were on this huge trip, my girlfriend and I, and we had taken off six months from school and we were just doing this, we bought these cheap round the world plane tickets and we were in Malaysia. And I wanted to see the way I heard about these, these sea turtles. It, the beach, it turns out is like 20 miles long. And, and these sea turtles 
they only come out like once a year or sometimes not even every year. You know, it's like it's super rare and if there's a season to it. But the coastline's so large, like the chances, and they, they come out in the middle of the night, you know, like what are the odds that you're going to see this? But there's this place you can go and there's these little cabins and you stay there. You know, the whole point is to stay there, and go out and hunt around and see if you can see one of these things. And a leatherback turtle, I mean, they're like the size of a minivan. I mean, they're these huge creatures and they just swim around the ocean all year long, just out in the middle of the ocean. And they have these huge migrations and, and they come ashore to lay these eggs. You know, they're just like wise men of the sea. They're huge. I was not prepared for how big they were and just how, you know, it's like a whale or something. It's just like, oh my God. And so we go to this place and, and we're staying there. And I think it was the second night and, you know, we went out with flashlights and, you know, there's no way. I mean, this, the beach goes on and on and it, it just, you get tired and you go back. But what the little local villagers had figured out, these kids, they run up and down the beach. They get on their bikes. They run their, they They look for these turtles. And when they find one at two in the morning, they run back to these little cabins where these handful of travelers are staying, you know, and they, I'll never forget it. They just like bang on the door. You're just woken up and they're like, sea turtle, sea turtle, sea turtle. You know, it's like three in the morning and you know, it's just like, where the, where am I? You know, and, and you wake up and it's suddenly, oh my God, there's sea turtles, you know, and you, you're, you know, in your pajamas practically and you put on some, it's warm out, but it's the middle of the night, you know, and you don't need shoes because it's on this beach and it was super low tide and we're running down this beach and there's about, seven or eight other people from different parts of the world that were woken up because these kids get it. They know they're going to get a tip, you know, and we're running behind this little kid, a couple of these little kids, you know, and they're in bare feet and it's like a full moon. And there's just, it's awesome. I mean, the, the moonlight on the sand and the water and, and, and the smell, the sea smell, you know, and we're running like fast, you know, and, and I remember running down the beach just thinking, this is extraordinary. I just felt so good. I was so excited to see a sea turtle, you know. In normal life you like go out and get a burrito, but like this was amazing, you know, and and just being woken up and and the anticipation and running and realizing that this thing wasn't like 20 yards down the beach. We were running and it was a few miles of running on this beach. And Sure enough, we get there in, you know, and there's this dark form on the beach, you know, and we have lights and everything. And the sea turtles like pulled itself out, huge leather back. It's leathery, the skin, you know, giant thing that's been in the middle of the ocean and it's scratching at the, the sand and it's just, it's rifling out these eggs. I mean, there's just, they're like white, big golf balls, you know, just like, you know, laying dozens and dozens and dozens of eggs. Like there's a whole method to this, you know, it's like do it in the middle of the night, do it on a remote stretch of beach. Cause you know, a coyote, you can just eat these. They're just completely vulnerable and they're going to, and then she buries it and then crudely kind of swim walks across the sand. And it's a low tide, you know, and the moon's going down watching this thing. It's never going to see these little offspring. Like it's gone and it gets in the water, you know, slowly. It takes it a long time to get back in the water and the moon's on its back and, and, and it just leaves and leaving this cache of, I don't know, a hundred baby sea turtle eggs, you know, that are going to hatch in a couple days. But that's what I think of when I think of what it's like to feel alive. And when I have those experiences, when, and it's like, well, what is that? You know, what, what makes something feel alive? Well, it's something that you've never experienced before. It's something that's different, that comes along. It's something that has contrast. It's something that's that's new when you're surrounded by old. It's something that's young when you feel everything's broken, you know, like a, the young shoots of, you know, when the redwood trees in the spring, they have this beautiful, like 
gorgeous green, super soft part of the leaf that comes out. And it's sitting on the ends of the winterized tree, which is mu- much darker. And those needles are, are much darker and worn out. Differences of, of all kinds when we hit up against those, and it's usually on the edges of things, you know, and that's another thing, you know, in places, watching that sea turtle go from the dry land, the sand and the grit and the, and the danger of it. And she's designed to be swimming, but she's on the land and it's really clumsy, but there's the margin, there's an edge and there's the sea and it's, there's that tension of the water coming up and going back and it's dry and it's wet and it's dry and it's wet. And those two things put together and when she goes into the water and it's like, there's just that juxtaposition where a dry desert, you know, and an oasis in a desert is the same thing. A birthday is the same thing. You know, every day is the same, but then it's your birthday and you think about different things and friends call you and things happen that are out of the ordinary. So I kept thinking, you know, as I, as I started to discover that if I could tap into the feeling of how I feel when I'm alive, if I could connect with that, it made my expression more like that. And then interestingly enough, the actual material, the actual principles of art making followed suit where if you feel like you've been working all day and then you take a walk and you bump into a friend and there's that energy that comes from that. Like you don't usually see this person. It's a coincidence. And you, you were just walking the dog or your normal routine. And then, and you meet somebody that you haven't seen and it's memorable. It's powerful. It's a huge part of the day that the same thing applies for other people when they look at your work And they see things in it that they haven't seen before. When there's things in your work that that show the differences between things, whether it's a dull color next to a bright color, or whether it's, you know, an out of control mark next to a controlled mark, these differences become interesting. They become interesting to you because it juices you, it brings you alive, it connects you to that source of wonder that you had as a little kid. You know, we all felt that way. We all have that history, but we lose it. And I think that's the invitation for artists. I think that's what we're involved in, is that reconnection. And what's sort of surprising to me is that you can arrange these things. You can practice this on a painting or a sculpture or bringing these things together and it transmits, it communicates, it makes other people feel alive. They don't necessarily understand why they do, but they just do. They, they say, I just, I love that. I want, can I want to take that home and put it in my bedroom? You know, like, I love that that happens, you know, that, that this is universal. And so that's an angle that's a, a workaround. It brings you back to yourself that the answers and the inquiry and the what am I going, what am I doing and what am I going to make and how am I going to make something and everything's been made before. All of those concerns sort of drop to the side. Feeling alive becomes the sort of currency of this practice. And feeling alive and feeling free in your life and feeling free in your art and to be experimenting. And when you feeling alive, there's a certain, there's a degree of uncertainty in it. You don't know all the time what's happening. I think what made that chasing and and just seeing for the first time a leatherback sea turtle was just the anticipation of it and, and not knowing where it was and when it was going to come and all of that, like we don't get to know all the time. And there's an experimental 
improvisational aspect to this that we need to carry in our work. We, we need to have that in our work. So if we're looking at our work and I've done this and I do this and it, it starts to fall flat, it starts to, it's the, the opposite. If, it, if, it, if you start to feel even the slightest tinge of boredom, it's that you've forgotten those things. You've forgotten. It's not on the edge for you anymore. And this is natural, right? I mean, this is things you, you grow, you change. And what was exciting to you after doing it so many times, it starts to become routine. It's the curse, but also the bless of being an artist. The curse that we can't just perfect the potato chip and, you know, just make a million potato chips and just keep selling them over and over and over and making them because it feels so good. I just make the same thing and I'm good at it. And I do the same thing. That's kind of a bummer, but it's also that doesn't provide that the question. It doesn't provide the spaciousness, the uncertainty, the mystery and the wonder. And you're not curious when you've figured it out. So I guess what I just wanted to share today was to be like thinking about that, to be thinking about what brings you alive, what optimizes you, because you get to create this, you get to create this in your life. It's not like an occasional thing. You can set this up. You can set your life up in a way that produces amazing art, right? Like we always think that like, well, what am I going to make? We focus so much on the art, but if we can focus on ourselves, on how we're setting ourselves up to feel and think and behave and respond, then what we make becomes powerful and becomes easier and it becomes more almost viral in, in its energy. So I hope that is, is helpful. And I, I, it's changed my life. It's the whole approach that I'm sort of riffing off of that I come back to over and over and over again. Thanks for being here. This is Nicholas Wilton, and this is Art to Life. Hey, thanks for listening to the Art to Life show. If you enjoyed the podcast, please help me get the word out by sharing it with your friends on Instagram at art to life underscore world. The recording of this and all episodes, along with a place to leave comments, see additional photos, and discover a whole new approach to making art can be found by going to arttolifepodcast.com. And secondly, if you could leave a rating and review and whatever app you're listening on today, I would super, super appreciate it. It makes a big difference. And last but not least, before you go, if you'd like to be on my artist list, every Sunday morning, I send out a video blog all about art making. Go to arttolivepodcast.com to sign up. And all these links are in the show notes, of course. Thanks so much for being here and we'll see you next week.